Hello, ladies. Welcome to another episode of the Women of Grace vlog series. Today, I have Cindy Huzinski with me. So, Cindy, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, my name is Cindy Pruszynski. I am a mother of three adult children, and I am a PE teacher. And it's a little uh, challenging right now during the pandemic, but that's okay. And I was a member of Bethlehem Church for over 20 years, and then um, with the merge, I'm you know really happy to be a member of Grace and part of the women's ministry team. So it's been a, a really great experience with that. Thanks for sharing. Um, so Cindy, I'm going to ju jump right into our interview. Uh, so you and I have talked a bit about God's faithfulness in your life. Can you share some of those experiences that you've had with that? Sure, I'd be glad to. Um, I, it's funny, I'm doing a study right now with some other women, and it's on the fruit of the spirit. And one of the fruits is faithfulness. And so you know, we talk about how we want to see faithfulness in our own lives, but it, it, all these, all the fruit of the spirit come back to how God's demonstrated them to us. So it, it really made me think more and more about how God had shown his faithfulness in my life. And, um, my journey with God has been a, a, just an amazing one. And, I just part the part that I want to share today is the part with my um, my husband and our family, and I married a wonderful Christian guy, Mike, uh, thirty years ago, and we had, you know, a great time together. Really, just we were um, we really enjoyed being together. Had our kids; it was you know awesome raising our kids. He was a very involved dad. He was you know coaching little league teams and he was very involved with men's ministry at church um, really involved with different ministries and it was really even during those times when things were you know good you'd still see God God's faithfulness in different situations with family members and it kind of grew um, I think we have to really look around sometimes but remind ourselves of how God's being faithful during all the different, you know, goods and bads of what we're going through in life. Um, 10 years into our marriage, we hit a few major bumps in the road. Um, Mike's dad was diagnosed with cancer and passed away. Mike was diagnosed with diabetes and it was a real struggle to get that under control. And he ended up losing his job and all this took place in the span of about six months. Oh, wow. And it was pretty overwhelming to I can imagine. just try to recover from one of those and then another one would come. And unfortunately, um, Mike decided to start having a glass of wine at dinner. Kind of simple, but we, you know, we had never, we didn't have alcohol in the house at all. Um, and so it was kind of a challenge to even do that. And then unfortunately, Satan just kind of used that as a tool and really got a hold of Mike. And so the next 10 years were a struggle of dealing with Mike in and out of rehabs. Um, at one point, I took the three kids out of the house because I didn't feel we were never in any danger. Mike was never abusive in any, you know, in any way at all. But he just really couldn't couldn't function as the dad that we were used to and as a husband that that I was used to, and so knew that that was not a healthy place for a, for the kids and I to be right um, and there were times in those ten years where things seemed good he'd get back on track he'd be working again. Um, we really worked hard as a family to get back together. Um, there was a wonderful um, Christian Rehab in South Jersey, Keswick, and it was a four month long program. And it was, it really made a huge difference in our lives. And during that time, we really worked on, you know, getting back together. And um, unfortunately, 10 years ago, um, there were, you know, the ups and downs, as I'd mentioned, and Mike ended up passing away from, you know, just complications with all that he had been through with everything. Uh, so I was left with, um, my two sons were in high school. There was a, Aaron was a junior and Jacob was a freshman 
and my daughter Hannah was in seventh grade. And um, so really felt that, you know, I knew God had me in that place of, this was still our family. Mike had, and I had both invested a lot in the kids over the course of time. And I just knew that God um, really needed me at that point to be faithful in what he had called me to do. And he continued to be faithful during that time. And now, 10 years down the road, uh, you know, my daughter's married, my sons, all three of them have jobs. And if you had told me 10 years ago when Mike first passed away that this would be the story to this point, I think I would probably have been challenged by that, but shouldn't have been because, you know, God is so faithful. And sometimes we have a hard time like trusting him for that. And right, yeah. he will do what he's, you know, he's promised to do above and beyond um, what we can ask or imagine. And he really has shown himself faithful in, in that respect for me. So I just wanted to kind of encourage people with that a little bit. But. So how did God reveal his faithfulness to you slash remind you of his faithfulness during that time? Because I can imagine like it was such a very difficult stage of life to lose your husband for your kids and then for you yourself. So how did he remind you of that? Yeah. Um, and I'm not saying everything was perfect. There were many right. in the shower where that's where I would cry because then the kids wouldn't know I was crying, you know? And mm -hmm. I, um, for, there was a period of time where I just, I read over the Psalms again and again and again, because all those emotions that are in there are emotions that, it's okay for us to experience and God can handle all of those. And knowing that, you know, other people have had these different emotions and that God's okay with that, I think was a good reminder for me that he was like letting me know you, you can, you can feel that. So the Psalms was really important. I remember times like I'd wake up in the middle of the night and I, I would just, a song would come like a worship song would come and like put me back to sleep. And I just, I was always able to sleep during the night, which, you know, people or my doctor would be like, how are you sleeping? And I'm like, actually I'm sleeping good. But I really felt like it was God, like you need to rest. And, you know, if you wake up, it was just like a surrounding uh, lullaby kind of, of like, go back to sleep. It's okay. Um, oh, wow. And I remember one time just talking to my mom on the phone and her being, you know, obviously upset, concerned over all that was going on. Right. Makes sense. And I just remember feeling and saying to her, God has me in the exact place where I need to be. I don't understand, you know, we don't always understand the whys, right? He had surrounded me with people from church my family, you know, neighbors, friends, people at work, everywhere I turned, God had put someone there. And it, sh it, you know, it didn't need to be anything major. I mean, sometimes one year at Christmas, people from school put a Toys R Us gift card. And I didn't know who it was from. I just knew it was from some of the other people. But so then I could get stuff for the kids. Oh, um, so sweet. One year, one of the men from church um, who was involved with the boys' brigade took the two boys to a, a ice hockey game up at West Point. Just little things that, like, you wouldn't think about asking for because you sometimes you're in a place of not even knowing mm -hmm. or even being capable of asking. But God knows what God knows, like what we need at different times, and when we just kind of trust that he'll figure it out. It, it works out way better than we could really like think of having it work out. So, I mean, just, just those things, um, you know, for me, people, psalms, songs, those things that are around us, but we don't always kind of take time to notice, I think, mm -hmm. or just like ways that God continually like just showed up for me during that time. And still does, but 
Yeah, no, I like how you said like that God like showed up for you, like he, like through people, through his psalms, through like worship music that you weren't even like expecting to hear at night. Like that's that's really cool that you got like a, a lullaby from God. Like <laughs> that's so cool. <laughs> but I really like what he said about the psalms that like it's such a I'm actually reading through the psalms right now myself and it's such a range of emotion. Like one psalm will be like, Oh my gosh, thank you, God, for everything. Like you have blessed us. Well, and the next psalm will be like, God, why have you left me in this pit of despair? And it's like and they're right after, like one right after the mm-hmm. other. Like it's, it's just the Psalms are such like the human experience with God that it's so nice to read through them because it's like, oh, everything that I'm feeling, like you said, like everything I'm feeling, like that's okay. Like yep. David felt these things, or or Moses who wrote one, like felt these things. Like all of these great people from the Bible felt all of these same emotions that I'm feeling right now. And like, so if God can, ha- if it's in the Bible and God can handle it, so He can handle my emotions too. And be faithful through them because even like the Psalms that David has, that he wrote are all about God's like faithfulness in the end. Like even in the ones where he's like, God, how could you like leave me like this? He's like, but I know it's for your glory. It's for whatever reason. Like, that's really cool that God showed you his faithfulness in the Psalms and just people showing up. So I'm just curious, was there a specific like moment of faithfulness that God showed you that stuck out to you the most during that time? Or is it all just like little things that were like, yeah, wow. there were there were so many different, even like just conversations and moments, and I, it's it's interesting because I, I even like now, I one of my prayers is especially for my kids, like God, just show yourself to them today, show yourself to me. I think we're so we get so crazy busy that we forget to look for those things mm-hmm. and those. So there wasn't really, I mean, there was, there were so many different ones, like right. to pinpoint, I can't really pinpoint to one specific one. There were so many times in that span of really 20 years of just, wow, wow, wow. Of knowing that God is faithful again and again and again. Um, it's just really, yeah, it's, it's really just cool to, <laughs> to just remind me remind myself of that you know as I was kind of just like thinking through this and thinking of these different times and just like being overwhelmed again of how God used all these different things to just show himself faithful so it's awesome like just like hear about his faithfulness in your life that's like so nice to hear (laughs) um so I have a question. Uh, have you seen yourself and or your family grow in their faith or your faith during this journey and how so? Um, for my kids, I, so one of the hardest things, one of the hardest lessons, but one of the best lessons that I would ever want to learn is that whole situation with Mike was like out of my control mm-hmm. as much as you know, I'd want to like, let's try this or maybe this or maybe that, or why not this or that in the end, you know, with everything, um, it's not in my control. And that became a huge lesson for me as, you know, the kids were now, um, when Mike passed away, two high school sons and a daughter in middle school, um, talk about not being in control of, Mm -hmm. and just, a whole lot of time in prayer. I mean, I can't like, um, yeah, lots and lots of prayer, I would say is how my faith grew during that time, because I just had to make sure that I was staying connected to the one I knew who could see me through. I mean, he's promised to look out for orphans and widows and just to see him do that. So for my kids, like they're, their journeys are are theirs, and it's neat to see them how they're living their lives now as young adults and trying to figure out where things are going to be and what their faith is going to be and what it's going to look like for them, and still kind of having that opportunity to speak into that. But they're not in, you know, first, third, and fifth grade, and I'm bringing them to Sunday school anymore either. Right. They um, they need to in a lot of respects, figure things out themselves. And it's, it's neat to watch that in each of their lives and, and how God's doing that. Um, for me, I was able to, um, 
just that the prayer aspect was a huge piece. Um, at different parts of the journey, um, the different small group studies that I've been in have been huge in helping me learn about myself, about others, about our walks, about um, just different. Some, some of the studies I've done have been so good over time. Um, one of them was uh, Ann Voss Camp, A Thousand Gifts, and just looking every day. There's so many things. And just that reminder. Um, and just the women that have been in my life because of these studies and how God has used some very special relationships with other women to um, get me through that time, not just get me through that time, but um, to grow through that time. You know, the mm -hmm. difficult times can be times that we, as challenging as they are, that's where we see that growth. And that's yeah. where we see like, you know, we can really dig into different parts of our faith that we might not do if everything's always just kind of peachy keen at this level. So yeah, like where rubber meets the road kind of. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, so that's been, that's been the, I think just, um, the opportunity to teach women's Bible studies over the years with, you know, with other women. And, um, that's been a huge growth piece for me too. And, and being able to do that and just seeing how God just works in our lives and, works in the church and works in so many different things. Like it just, it's really amazing to just kind of watch him do that and, and see that it's going on. And, and that's like, when I pray, like, just sh help me see you today. Help me to see where you are in my life today and not just blow through the day, like have my devotions mm -hmm. go through the day, right? right? Yeah. Throughout the day. And that, and that's what I want. And that's what I pray for my kids too. I'm like, help them to see you today, whether it's a friend calling them or, a, you know, a beautiful bird or whatever, you know, just like there's so, he's, he's faithful in being all around us all the time when we're faithful and paying attention. Like, <laughs> the fact that he is there. So. Yeah. No, it's true. I think a lot of us, like myself included, I think we kind of just go through the day and we forget to look for God in the in the mundane in the everyday like yeah. just looking outside and seeing I don't know I feel like when I notice God the most is when I'm going for walks and I see it in nature because like how could someone create all this like for us to live in but even just like little things like you said like people showing up people calling you when you really need it or somebody sending a text or a card on a time that was really hard for you and you, you didn't know they didn't know that you were going through a difficult time they kind of just right. was like hey you were on my heart and you're like yeah thanks God. And thank you. <laughs> like <laughs> just like those moments that you don't like, we just kind of blaze through the day and we never take the time to smell the roses and notice God in them. But yeah, no, I really like that. Um, you said something about prayer and I was just curious if you don't mind sharing. Um, you said you grew in prayer. Do you, how did, how, how do you say you grow in prayer? Like, was it, did your prayers change? Did you feel like a stronger, like a closeness that you didn't have prior or did you like, how, how do you think it grew? Probably in the biggest way was just like throwing everything mm -hmm. in God's lap. Like not, um, not just keeping prayer to a certain time when I'm going to pray about these specific things, but anytime something came up, just, going to God like right then in that moment and just trying to make prayer more a part of what I'm doing. Um, every little thing, because for me, I know because I want to control things and think I can work through them. I had to kind of like break that down and say, I can't. And the other piece to that was asking other people to pray for me and with me that became huge. Um, and that was hard at first because people were so stunned when they realized we were going through this because this was just so out of left field. Like it just was not, so many things were not expected. So for, for when I first started asking people that I was close to about it, part of it was like, that prayer piece became huge. And then like, I have a dear sister now um, 
we still pray on a regular basis together. And if we don't pray, we share prayer requests at least if, you know, but Mm -hmm. having somebody else in your life that will pray with you, I can't express enough, like how big a piece that is. And then, um, in my own time, it's been different, different times. I know some people like to journal, some people like to focus on different things. So I've probably over the course of time used all those different ones. One thing that was, um, neat for me a few years ago, I was going through uh, just a personal challenging time and um, God used the Lauren Daigle CD. I love her. And (laughs) one of the the song that, you know, that I first heard was first. And I I just like, it really struck me of how we need to seek God first. And I started journaling her songs and praying those different songs because there are so many different emotions of what was going on there, how we're not worthy, how he's, you know, raising dry bones, all all these different things. And so that was like really neat to do. And just how, you know, worship songs, so many of them are really prayers and being able to sing those through sometimes. And what's in the song is like, yeah, that's what I'm going through. God, I'm like giving this back to you and, take this, you know? And, and so, um, it's just been a a part that I would say would, would probably be the biggest part in that journey of how God like changed me from where it used to be, which was, here's my devotions, here's my prayer time, pray before dinner. And that's pretty much, that was pretty much it. You know, Like you had him at a set certain time, like God meeting at 2 PM. Okay. Next. yeah. 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 And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I still, right. do, you know, my morning devotions, that's a big piece of it and what I'm doing, but understanding like God's with us all the time. Mm-hmm. We, we don't like, we not saying take advantage of that, but we forget that we, mm-hmm. that we can go to him whenever, whatever, wherever. And that's like, that's just been a part of that. He grew me. So that's been a neat part of it. Right. Like he, like have your God time, whether it's, in the morning and the evening, whenever it is, but realize that he's always there. So if something happens outside of that God time, he's still there. It's not like he was only at that meeting for that time period. Like he's always around. Yeah, no, that's, and to, and to think that we have access like that, it's just, honestly, it's very humbling. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's a little over, it's overwhelming. It really it is. And I think, you know, that's why we think like, uh, he doesn't want to hear from me. I'll go talk to my friend. I'll, you know, work it through myself. But no, he like, he wants that from mm-hmm. us. He's, you know, like, hello, I'm, I'm here. It's like, I'm right here. I want to hear it. Yeah. I hear about your day. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's so true. Yeah. And it's just yeah. like, ah, uh, flooring to think of. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh man. Well, Cindy, thank you so much for sharing. Um, before we head out, I was just wondering if you have a piece of advice or encouragement for our viewers about your experience and, and for them, if they're going through the same things or similar things. Yeah, I'd say, um, don't miss, don't miss the opportunity, right? Um, Mm -hmm. life is not easy. We, we make that mistake as young Christians and maybe some of us have been told like, you know, everything will be honky dory and we know that well, and we know there's going to be challenging times, um, but God is faithful. Um, in the study that I'm doing with the women on the, the fruit of the spirit, this chapter refers back to second Chronicles and Jehoshaphat is, has this amazing prayer and he's trying to like encourage the, the encourage the Israelites before they go into this battle, but he's reminding them of God's faithfulness. And there's three phrases in the prayer that, are, I don't want to mess it up. Um, I wrote it down. So he's, he, his three phrases are, did you not, are you not, and will you not? And, you know, God, past, present, and future, God did amazing things. He is with us now, and he will be faithful. And so that's just kind of what I want to leave people with. Like, it's all the time. It's whenever. And just look around and grab onto those times because he is, he is faithful. So. Thanks for sharing that phrase. It's so true. Like past, present and future. He is faithful throughout. Like he has shown us what he can do. That's why we have his, the Bible. Like we can see Mm -hmm. the miracles and 
wondrous things that he did. And then in the present, we can see it in our own lives and our, and our friends' lives and the people around us. And then the future, well, that's faithfulness. That's where he comes in and we know he'll be there because he's been pretty consistent so far. <laughs> yeah. It's good stuff. Right? Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing, sharing. Cindy. Thank you. It was so great to have you here and I hope you ladies enjoyed this episode and that we'll see you for the next one. Bye.